Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 4 of How to Speedrun Anything. Today we're looking at Untitled Goose Game's Any% percent Glitchless category. The game was developed by House House and released in September 2019 for PC, Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. While the Glitchless category isn't the most popular for the game, with 79 runs compared to the much shorter Any% percent's 111, it's the easiest to get into in my opinion, and gives a good starting point to get into other categories. The current world record is 12 minutes and 19 seconds by RowanVDV77, the median time is roughly 18 minutes and 45 seconds, and a 14 minute and 16 second time is required for top 10. My goal time for this game is somewhere in the 17 to 18 minute range. There isn't too much setup required for the run. The speedrun can be done on any platform, but for this tutorial I'll be playing on PC. Whether you use a keyboard or controller is up to your personal preference, as there isn't a noticeable favoring of one control scheme throughout the top runs. Regardless of what you use to play, a video of the run is required to submit to the leaderboards. Also, if you're playing on PC, an auto splitter is available to use. For my controls, I use default, the only exception was setting the zoom setting to toggle. I tended to want to play while zoomed out anyways, this gave a better view of the NPC's movements, but that's personal preference. Because this is a beginner's tutorial, some strats won't be optimal or best for getting the best possible time. You can always refer to top runner's runs if you want to see the most optimal strategy. I'll try to explain what's best while also giving alternatives in case you miss cycles. Starting off, timing begins on the first honk. Moving through the initial section, get to the gate. It's possible to climb up the right side of the gate to get over it. This is not considered a glitch as you're just using the geometry to get up, as opposed to using an item to clip through something outright. This saves about 2 seconds if done optimally, so it's not a big deal if you miss it. Move straight up through the lake until you get to the tap on the wall next to the garden. In this garden section, the groundskeeper, known to the community as Willy, can be in a few different positions. There are a lot of NPC positions to be aware of during the run, and Willy is the first. Ideally, you want Willy to be in the range of the sprinkler, as this allows you to complete the task immediately. Regardless of where Willy is, keep the sprinkler on until he opens the gate. Once the gate is open, turn the tap off and run over to grab his keys. If you did not clear the groundskeeper being wet task initially, drop the keys near the sprinkler and run back to the tap to clear that task. Move to the rows in the next plot of dirt and pick it up. You may need to honk if Willy's attention is on another object. Once he bends down to plant the rose, take his hat. You can hide the hat in the shrubs off to the right and then take the rake. Willy will most often focus on getting his sun hat over the rake if you're fast enough, so take the rake to the lake. You'll clear that task and the sun hat task at the same time, so move back towards the end of the garden to get ready to clear the last task. When Willy goes to hammer the sign, honk and he'll hammer his thumb. Then, take the trowel on the right side. This will be used to lure Willy to the next section to clear a task faster. You'll next need to climb over Willy to get to the next section faster. To do this, you can hold the button to lower your head and walk over Willy's body. Stand at around this spot to get his attention, then once he starts running after you, run towards the next section. It's important that Willy keeps his attention towards the trowel the whole time and doesn't wander back into the garden. The next section, High Street, is the start of the multitasking that you'll need to do in this run. While holding the trowel, move to the center of the area. Depending on the NPC position, the boy may be in a good spot so you can drop the trowel then push him towards the payphone. Before he enters the payphone, untie his shoes so you can get the glasses task later on. If you honk enough, you can get Willy's attention so he doesn't pick up the trowel. It's important that Willy's attention is still on the trowel so he can buy it back later. After the boy gets locked in the payphone, run back and drop the trowel on the box with the other tools around the right side of it. This will start the animations of Willy buying his item back. If the position of the shopkeeper is good and you're fast enough, you can break the broom by grabbing it before the shopkeeper begins her animation with Willy. If you're unable to break the broom, grab a pair of glasses from the stand and move towards the TV shop. You won't get stopped by the shopkeeper, so don't worry about running near her as she'll be busy with Willy. When the TV shop owner leaves the shop, enter the shop and wait a bit for the payphone door to open. After this, press the button, move back a bit, and clear the task for get on TV. Leave the shop, pick up the glasses, and move back towards the payphone. Once the TV shop owner leaves, move to the boy, who should be tying his shoes, and grab his glasses off his face. You can then drop the other glasses at his feet, he'll pick them up and you'll clear that task. If you haven't cleared the broom break task, move back towards the shopkeeper and get her attention, then break the broom. If you miss the groundskeeper buying the trowel back and Willy's nowhere to be seen, you'll need to bring the toy plane to the box with the toys on it and wait for the boy to walk over and buy it back to clear that task though this loses a lot of time. Once the final task is unlocked, grab the Viewmaster or a pair of glasses and get to the garage door. This eyewear will be used in the next section to clear a task a bit faster. Once the shopkeeper gets to the door, 
drop the eyewear you picked up near the back of the garage. Trap the shopkeeper in the garage, pick up the eyewear, and move through the door to the right. Go towards the next section, the back gardens. The back gardens are heavily reliant on cycles. With the eyewear you got from High Street, move through the fence. Ideally, the best start would be for the clean neighbor, known as Roger, to be holding the newspaper. The worst start would be for Roger to be fixing the teapot, but he can also be drinking tea. I personally just wait for the newspaper cycle. Put your eyewear behind the shrub, then sneak out and grab the slipper while he's reading the newspaper. Put the slipper behind the same shrub and honk. This will get Roger's attention so you can bring the eyewear to him. While he's throwing the eyewear over the fence, grab the newspaper and put that behind the shrub, all without him noticing. If he does happen to notice any of these items behind the shrub, you should take a time loss and take the newspaper and slipper through the fence you came from. This will prevent Roger from ever getting the items back and continue with his cycles. After this, you'll want to get the other items to dress up the bust, the pipe and hat. Grab the pipe and go around the top side of the table. You'll want to get Roger somewhat stuck in the corner between the table and fence to make him lose sight of you faster and eventually stop chasing you. Bring the pipe to the fence at the bottom and repeat the same process for the hat. Once you get these items to the fence without Roger grabbing them from you, take the string off the fence and walk through, holding one of the items. You can get Tina, the messy neighbor's attention, by putting either item at the base of the bust. Once she starts putting an item on the bust, continue taking items to her. Once she puts the eyewear, pipe, and hat on the bust, run over to the drawer at the top of the area and pull it out. If you've done this fast enough, Roger's cycle where he drinks tea will be close to starting. Once he starts drinking the tea, ring the bell. You'll get the task for having him spit it out. Tina will likely be wandering around at this point. You can take the ribbon from the goose statue to get her attention and make her move faster. Use this to get her into the conversation with Roger about the bell. Once they're talking, move down to the goose statue and hide it behind the planters at the bottom of the area. You'll have time as Tina moves to reset the bell after the conversation. You can then re-grab the ribbon to get Tina's attention again to the open fence. While she fixes the fence, sit in the place where the goose statue once was and get the ribbon put on you. Once you see the task being completed, move to startle Tina and make her fall. Peck at the shrub to keep Tina in that area, grab the vase, and move to Roger's side. Next, you'll want to drop the vase, grab Roger's other slipper, and finish that task. Give Roger the vase to break, then move back down to the fence. Ideally, Tina will be in that area to begin the final task. Roger will move down and remove the sign next to the rose bush. Undo the fence, poke the shrub, and wait for Roger to move the sign. You'll be able to drag the prize rose planter down enough before Tina cuts it. Once this is done, undo the fence once more and grab the bra on the clothesline. This is used to make Tina move faster to where she needs to go to allow you to move to the next section. It's worth noting that this is an optimal way to do this section. This is very difficult to properly do, especially as a beginner. If you're having trouble getting the whole route, try and break it up into sections. Make sure you're getting at least one slipper off Roger and hiding the newspaper before moving to Tina's side the first time and have him throw the eyewear over. This allows you to get the tasks for spitting tea out and starting the tasks for the vase and getting the other slipper. The hardest part for me is getting Tina in a good area to properly get the ribbon on you without wasting too much time. Expect to wait a lot for the ribbon if you can't get the cycles down fast enough or getting the NPCs in the right spot. Once she removes the panel on the fence, leave and move on to the next section, the pub. The pub is also reliant on cycles. The first obstacle is the woman carrying boxes in and out of the pub area, known as Box Girl. To get past the bouncer, known as Vinny, Untie both of his shoes quickly and sneak past during his surprised animation. Then, move towards the courtyard where the two women are at the picnic bench. This will cause Vinny to fall due to having untied shoelaces and then stay in that area. Honk on your way to the inclined area next to the bench. Then, honk, lower your head, and then spread your wings for the women. This will get you the flower. You don't need to wait too long between these moves, and you don't need to be around to be awarded the flower. Next, move towards the old man. If you got here fast enough, he should be about to start throwing darts. If so, wait a bit for him to be ready to throw, honk, and have him break the dartboard. Immediately go to the pub seating section to grab a pint glass. Vinny should be going to grab the flower to return it to its place, so he won't be in the way. Move the pint glass back outside and down towards the canal. At the gate for the canal, lower your head and drop the glass. You must lower your head first or you'll drop the glass too far and break it. Open the gate and drop the glass into the canal. If you're too close to the corner of the bridge, it's possible to break the glass, making you miss the task. As you move back towards the pub, you might be fast enough to move past Vinny. If not, untie his laces again and move towards the old man at the dartboard. If done fast enough, he should be just about to sit down. If so, grab the stool and move right to make him fall. If he's not on the right cycle, just wait until you can get it. Next, move up into the seating area and turn on the tap. You'll need to run around and keep the waitress from turning off the tap until you can grab the toy boat. 
you may need to hold the boat for a bit to properly clear the task, so make sure that's completed before you move on. Turn off the tap and lure the waitress back down the stairs. You may need to bump into her to change her focus to the goose sign and not the toy boat. Once she starts moving to the sign, move towards Vinny and lure him over to the tomato area on the left. By the time you get back, the tomato should be exposed for you to pull one out onto the ground. You may need to honk on the other side of the fence to keep Vinny's attention. Once he moves to the other side of the fence, begin moving back towards where the toy boat was on the upper section. When Vinny bends over to replace the tomato, peck the bucket to drop it on his head. Run back down to where Vinny is and wait for him to start moving. Wait a bit for him to pick up the crushed tomato box and move towards the dumpster. Once he opens the dumpster, you can run behind him and get on top of the dumpster lid. This may be a bit inconsistent, though you should be able to get through if you don't get stuck between collision. If you get caught here and are sent back towards the entrance, you can try and hide out in the area you waited in between the two sections to avoid any NPCs shooing you away, then move back towards the dumpster to move on. Open the gate on your way down and move towards the model village. Once you get to the model village, it's possible to get on top of the fence directly above you if you lower your head while walking towards it. Similar to the gate skip in the opening area, this is allowed in the glitches category. Move towards the bell, peck the tower a bunch, and pull the bar. Grab the bell and begin moving back home. Again, you can climb onto the fence in the same place. Move back towards the pub. This is the most difficult part of returning the bell as there are so many NPCs. The bell rings and alerts NPCs of your presence if you run, but does not if you walk, so it may prove worthwhile to just walk through the main pub area if you aren't as confident. You may need to stall an NPC behind a planter if they are in your way as well. It's important to note that if an NPC picks up your bell and you pick it back up from their hand, they have a fairly long animation of surprise that you can use to run away from them. Get through the pub and into the back gardens. Navigate around Tina and pull out the drawer again. You may be able to get Tina stuck behind some geometry, but it's not a big deal if she picks the bell up because of the animation mentioned earlier. It may be difficult to get around Roger if he's in an awkward spot, but just move around him and down to the bottom of his garden. Next, move through High Street. The shopkeeper may be in a few positions. If she has the broom in her thought bubble, just move through as you're not her priority. If she's already holding the broom, you may need to get her stuck around some other geometry to move on. If the boy gets in your way, just honk and he'll run away. Finally, get through the garden. You can move some items around the garden in between putting the rake in the lake and having Willie hammer his thumb way back at the beginning to get him focused on those instead of the bell. But if you don't do this, you can get his attention, then move around one of the planters to get around him. Move towards the end and drop the bell into the pit. Timing ends once the bell hits the bottom of the pit. This run was deceptively difficult. Upon watching the world record video, the run looked easy, and the only thing I thought would be an issue was the multitasking in the sections, as well as some movement optimization. However, after playing, the run was a lot harder than it initially looked. Learning to understand the NPC's positions and being able to adapt to them was very difficult. Adaptation to these NPC placements was the biggest hurdle in my runs. Some positions of Willy would have led to huge time losses, and I ended up resetting very often on the first split. This wasn't a big deal, as it was in the first minute of the run, and it's very easy to reset. However, this can get frustrated. At the highest level, you may absolutely require good NPC positions to be saving time on a split, so this may lead to many attempts at the run. Later in the run, the NPC positions are especially important, as starting off with Roger looking to fix his teapot in back gardens can lead to 20 or more seconds of time loss without you doing anything wrong. The same goes with NPC placements in the bell return. These frequent resets are offset by the short length of the run, however, so it's not like you're constantly resetting two hours into a run. So how did I do with this game? In my first few hours of running it, I was able to get a 1901. I had many attempts before a few close calls on PB, being within 10 seconds. Then, I was able to PB to an 1848. I wasn't too happy with this run, as I had to wait a few cycles in the pub, and had a ton of difficulty getting the bell back. I hadn't been playing much in between learning the run and now, but plan on getting at least somewhat of a better time soon. Overall, despite the frequent resets, I enjoyed this run. Frustrating at times, losing runs to bad NPC positioning, the length of the run made it feel better to reset. It's a short run compared to some others that I've done, and there's still a lot of time to save. There weren't many resources for this category to work off of and get to learning it. To learn the run, I watched some higher level runs to get an idea of what I'm supposed to be doing, as well as some marathon runs to understand why certain things are done. 
This is a good method of learning speedruns in general if a dedicated tutorial video isn't accessible or way out of date, as good commentary on a run can provide at least a high level understanding to those that don't know about the game or what's going on. The community really knows what they're doing with the game from what I've seen, and they're all really passionate about the game and caring about other runners, new or old. In my opinion, this is a great run for someone to learn if they want to get better at multitasking or adapting to changing scenarios in a speedrun on the fly, instead of the same muscle memory every time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, you can subscribe, click the bell that you just brought home, like, or do whatever else you do to show support. Suggestions for future videos are always appreciated and taken into consideration. Social medias can be found in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.